Shalom, shalom. Well, I greet you again from beautiful Uganda. And I send you greetings of joy, of peace, of love, of uh, total surrender to the Lord. Dear ones, I was asked to give my testimony in a very short time. So I will try now. Um, you know, I'm so, I'm so eager to hear testimonies from other people because I see that God never repeats his story. He has a new story for every person. And so uh, you will hear a new story with my life. Yeah, I was born uh, in 1939. I mean, it was wartime already. Hitler was in action. And uh, I was born, uh, I was conceived before marriage. That's why my parents married. And uh, it was never a romantic marriage. It was a faithful marriage, it was a hard-working marriage, but I missed the joy, the love, the romantic with my parents. You know, I felt like I was the reason for creating and not satisfying happy marriage. And so very early, you know, I remember I was four, four years old, four or five years old, when they had a fight, I got a spanking. So you soon realize you are a problem. And so I felt in my childhood a big problem. If I wasn't there, my parents would be happier. So it would really be better if I was not existing. And that heaviness of my life really, uh, <coughs> Well, kept me very low. I mean, of course, on the outside I smiled, but on the inside I was a very sad child. Very alone, misunderstood, um, uh, just unhappy about my existence. And I did think that my life would amount anything in this world. So at an early age, my mother said I was five, six years old, I already asked her, What's the purpose of my life? Why am I on this earth? Why am I living? My mother was very surprised that I would have questions like this. But this was the key question in my life that started at the very early age. And I knew I needed help. I knew, I mean, I, and, and by God's grace, my mother taught me to pray, children's prayers, but I loved to pray. And then another thing happened. My mother lost her mother when she was seven years old. And uh, there were three siblings below. My mother was the oldest, three more siblings. And my mother from one day to the other became the mother at the age of seven over three siblings. Her childhood finished when she was seven. Well, at the age of seven, darling, dear ones, my mother dropped me like a hot potato as a child and I became an adult. I became responsible for the behavior, for the performance of my younger brothers and sisters. And of course, that shocked me again. First, I'm responsible for an unhappy marriage. Then I'm responsible for how my brothers and sisters are behaving. I felt totally overwhelmed. I felt unprotected. And I felt that the load on my life was just too much. But by God's grace, in these, uh, and at seven years, you know, just before seven, uh, I was prepared for First Communion. I was raised Roman Catholic, and the priest they gave us was a very sick priest. He had legs this thick, but he knew Jesus. And he prepared us children to receive Jesus Christ, to live in our hearts, in our lives. And I tell you one thing, that was the hope in my life. When I heard about Jesus and that he wanted to live in me, I couldn't wait for the day to receive First Communion. For me, this was not a ceremony. For me, this was the beginning of a new life. And I was so thankful that Jesus is now living inside of me. I was so happy. I didn't want to see any of the relatives that came to celebrate with us. I didn't want to talk to anybody. I just wanted to be Jesus. So that was 
the beginning of my life with Jesus. I had no idea that that was the day I was born again. Because the Bible says to all, to all those that received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God. Uh, but I knew I was different. I knew something has happened in my heart. I am no longer alone. I am no longer lost. And uh, from that day on, uh, from primary school P1, and I was already in P2 at that time, I went every day into a church. I walked far up to the tabernacle and I wanted to talk to Jesus. And you know, for some reason, and I also consider that grace, I immediately had connection with the Heavenly Father. And I, I got my Father. I got a Father that loved me. I've got a Father that treasured me. And I got a Father who had time for me. And so I went every day into an empty Roman Catholic Church, walked up to the tabernacle because I was told that's what Jesus is. And I talked with him. And I promise you, he talked to me also. I heard him speak to me. And I, he gave me answers already. So, you know, shortly after that, I was eight years old, I think. Uh, but of course, I didn't read the Bible. Uh, I just prayed my children's prayers. But I had a personal relationship with God. Now, with all the teaching of the Roman Catholic Church, I thought, Jesus is now in my heart, but I need to hard, work hard so that he doesn't leave me, so that he will finally also accept me as a person fully. Because I had now, I thought I had Jesus, but now I need to earn and deserve that he is with me. And I promise you, I tried very hard to become a good person. Because I knew I had accepted Jesus. This I knew. But now I need to work hard that he can fully accept me. Because I saw so much that still needed to be changed. And that's when my life of salvation began. I was seven years old. And you know, somebody told me once, you are saved. You are being saved every day. And you will ultimately be saved when God calls you home. So uh, I need to tell you about this process. And I'm still in this process of being daily saved by Jesus. Yeah, but then, um, but then, uh, how shall I say, I talked with God, I walked with Him, I, uh, but, but still, I did not think I can be totally acceptable to God the way I am. I accepted Jesus, but if He could accept me, that was my big question mark. So, um, at the age of 19, and anybody who read my life story, <coughs> this is my life story. God doesn't play a role in my life. Uh, this is in German. I have it in English here. God doesn't play a role in my life. He's the managing director. In my life story, I go through all these parts of my life, how God led me slowly by slowly uh, out of misery into a life of fulfillment. And, uh, and he's still doing it. He's still doing it. You know, we go from glory to glory, from strength to strength, from miracle to miracle, from revelation to revelation. But uh, now I want to tell you how, because I was religious still in those days, I had Jesus in my heart, but I was totally bound by religious orders. So uh, at the age of 19, I got raped by a friend of the family. And this was the shock of my life. You know, I, uh, very early in my life, I already prayed. I said, Lord, you know, now I have, I have been responsible for an unhappy marriage. Now I'm responsible for my brothers and sisters, that they behave well. But Lord, please let me know the dream you have for my life. Because I want to live the dream that you have. And, uh, and I, I, because I thought, I cannot imagine that a God of total love, that's the only thing he has prepared for my life. So I was looking, you know, I, I, I knew marriage was out for me. I didn't think any man could still love me the way I was raped. I wanted to marry as a virgin, that was my total dream. And then uh, uh, I became a teacher 
you can read the whole story in my in my uh, my book uh, where I have written down in detail all the stages. But <clears throat> I realized my longing for children is too big to live without children. So I was very fascinated with the <coughs> SOS children's villages where they took single mothers, took uh, care of poor children, and so I applied for that. They didn't want to take me first because I thought I was too educated to be a mother and to just cook and change diapers and clean. But I was insisting I want to be a mother for these children. So they finally took me. And it was my goal to become the best. And I got the reputation to be the best in Austria. I, I couldn't say no. I thought no was a dirty word for Christians. So I always said yes. They gave me 10 children. I think it was 10, yeah. Three babies at a time and seven other kindergarten children, primary school children. No help. I had a house. I did all the cooking. I did all the cleaning. Of course, some of the children helped me already with some of it. And you know, after three and a half years, I realized I am at my, I, I have reached bottom line. I am so tired. And God was allowing me to go into a burnout. Which, you know, when we want to prove something to God, we will burn out. Because we don't have the strength to prove anything to God. And I wanted to prove to God that I'm a good person. That, that I will do great, great things to, to make changes in this world. And you know, then one night I went to bed and I, I had a vision in a half, I was half awake. In that vision I saw Jesus and he was standing there on an altar, a stone altar. And he said, Maria, now put every one of those children that I've entrusted to you and you've, given, uh, you've taken them from me, put them on the altar, like Abraham gave back Isaac. And dear ones, that was one of the toughest things I've ever had to do, because I wanted these children to be happy. And they were happy. I really, uh, I really raised them like my own. I, I saw that they can do, uh, they just really can enjoy life. And we were very <coughs> fond of each other. <coughs> But God told me, one by one, put them on the altar, give them back to me. I wept that night. I promise you, I've never wept like this before. And when I had the last child on the altar, <clears throat> and given back to Jesus, I saw in my room the cross, and Jesus Christ was on it. He was still living still alive, bleeding all over. And I saw myself standing with an apron that I held tight. We, we still wore wear aprons in those days. I held it very tight. And I wanted to hide what was in the apron from Jesus. For the first time I realized that my sin alone would have been enough to crucify Jesus Christ. I thought up to that date, well, Jesus died for the bad people in this world, but for me, they could have found another solution. So I saw for the first time my self-righteousness, my fear of God, my pride, it was all in this apron, and Jesus had opened it up. I said, Lord, it will hurt you. I don't want to hurt you. He said, Maria, that's what I'm here for. And I opened that apron. And it was like a magnet. All that was in that apron, all my pride, my self-righteousness, my, my false fear of God, came upon Jesus. But not only my sin, my sins, but my sin. My old, the old Maria was crucified with Christ. And I looked at him and I cried, because I saw how much pain I alone caused my beloved Lord Jesus. But then I looked at myself at the cross and I was dressed in a 
white dress, a beautiful spotless white dress. And I knew that very second that eternal life is a gift, that nobody can work for it. It's only by faith and grace, by receiving Christ, by exchanging our old life with, our, with his new life. And I knew for the first time nobody can earn eternal life. It has to be received by grace, which means undeserved, unmerited. And I was so sure for the first time I am a child of God. And I am a child of God because Jesus' blood cleansed me. And his work on the cross has done what I needed to become this new creation. You know, so many people think that uh, they are working for God. No, God is working for you. They, are looking, they think they are looking for God. No, God is looking for you. And when you realize God is looking for you, then you get this big with hat. You get humbled because you know God is with you. God is always for you. Even if you, if you don't feel nothing, God is with you. He is ever present. He's everywhere. So <clears throat> that's how I got saved. I mean first, the first salvation point was when I received Christ in my life. But now I got my old life exchanged with his life. Then there were many other experiences with God. More, you know, like the baptism in the Holy Spirit. But I want to make it short. He is still daily working on me. And without him, I am still zero every day the same. I go to bed as a zero and I wake up at a zero and I need 100% his presence in my life. And then I found out, you know, that to need God 100% is the greatest maturity of a Christian. So I want to stop here. This is my testimony. Jesus is my life. He's not only my savior, he's my life. He's my righteousness. He's my joy, my peace. He is my yesterday, my today, my tomorrow. He is my Lord and savior my best friend, my bridegroom, and I'm waiting for him every day to come and pick me and go with me to glory forever. Hallelujah. Shalom, shalom.